Peter Crew. I press, I press, having fun with you. You can be your friends, the fun will never end. Teaching you to draw and paint. Learning step by step, with simple shapes and styles. Sharing art adventures and happy smiles. Climb aboard and let's get started. show you how to paint the timber. To do this I will use acrylic paints. Acrylics are heavy or thick paints and are water based. This means that you mix them with water to thin them. Now there are many things we will teach you about acrylics and painting over time. However it can be difficult to remember everything but don't worry, as we will tell and show you these steps and techniques repeatedly in different ways to help you to learn them. The most important thing is to enjoy yourself. The more you enjoy yourself, the more you will learn. And of course, paint beautiful paintings. Now, before we start, it is always a good idea to wear an old t-shirt or a shirt or something similar when painting, as it can be difficult Get painted out of your clothes if you happen to get any on you. So, here we are with the beautiful drawing of Matilda that Captain Cosmo did. And I added a few extras to it. I finished off a little more of the fence over here. And I did a little bit more on the trough over here. And I even added in a little puddle of water. But then I was looking at it and I realised that it's such a beautiful drawing. It's almost a shame to go and paint over it. Wouldn't it be such a lovely drawing just to keep for itself? And even though Captain Cosmos doesn't mind me painting over it, I decided I'm going to do it out again. But of course, doing out the drawing again, and even just doing outlines, is quite a lot of work. So I thought it would be an opportunity for me to show you a very simple little technique when it comes to uh, tracing. Now, usually when you trace, you get a piece of tracing paper and you draw out and then you have to draw back over your paper. Whereas I decided to use a light box, especially when we're using heavy paper such as this, it's very hard to see through it. But then of course I realised I actually don't have a light box here on Star Racer. So the next best thing, and even better, is to use nature's light box. Yes, I hear you say, what is nature's light box? Well, nature's light box is using a window. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how we can trace the drawing of Matilda, the outlines, by using a piece of the glass on a window, by sticking the drawing onto the window. And um, it's a very simple technique, but a very effective one for making sure you get exactly the same ideas. And it makes it very quick if you want to do it, several of the same idea in terms of a drawing. Okay? So now you can see that I stuck the first drawing that Captain Cosmos did of Matilda up on the window, with masking tape, of course, so it doesn't damage the glass. And then I put a clean sheet of paper behind it, with also masking tape. And I hold the paper down so I can see the image nice and clean and clear. And then I come in and I just start putting the lines in. Now, as before, it doesn't have to be perfect. Just close enough so that I can get what I need out of it. The loose grass around the hoof there. Then the inner side of the leg there. You can see, it's very easy to use this and it's very effective. And it's a great way of making sure you can get exactly the same drawing without going to too much trouble. And you can do this oftentimes. Let's say you made something for your friends and you wanted more than one. This is a way of you having exactly the same one and making sure everybody gets exactly the same thing. Here we have the outline drawing. And I'm just going to go and put in a few little extra details before I start painting it. Now, I think we're ready to start painting. So I'm just going to go and get my paints organised. So, now, here we are. We have our drawing of Matilda. I have my paints out over here. And I'm going to take out a couple of the colours that I'm going to just use today. So we have some yellow, some red, and some blue. And we'll also be using a little bit of white. So we'll take out a little bit of white. This, oh my paws are very big for small packages like this. 
Now, I'll put some of those there. So what I want to do today is just use a limited palette, almost like the primary colours. The primary colours are the three colours from which all of the other colours are mixed. That is yellow, red and blue. Or lemon yellow, a light yellow, a dark red, a crimson red and a medium blue that we're going to use. And of course, we need to have some white for mixing, so I'm going to use those three. I have my brushes that I'll be using in this painting. So here are my brushes, some small ones and some big ones, so some small ones for the details, and maybe some big ones just for the big spaces. I have my, oops, some of my brushes dropped, I have to pick those up. I have my jar of water for cleaning my brushes, and for thinning the paint. I have pieces of kitchen towel, or kitchen roll, or kitchen paper, whatever you want to call it, for drying off my brushes. And I have the picture of Matilda. Of course, I have my imagination. I better just pick up my brushes first. Let's see, now it gets fine. Have those there. And of course, I have my plate, which I'm going to use as a palette. Now, here's a little tip. Sometimes acrylics can dry very quickly because they're water-based on the plate even before you use them, which is a bit of a waste. So I have a little trick that I like to do, and that is I like to make, to make what's known as a stay wet palette. Now, to make a stay wet palette, I'm simply going to put my palette, my plate there. I'm going to take a sheet of kitchen paper, or kitchen roll as I call it, and I'm going to put that over that like so. I have a jug of water here. I'm going to pour a little bit of water onto that, just to wet that paper. And I'm going to let that water absorb into the paper all the way around. Just press it down. All the way around, just press it down. I think I'll put a little bit more on it as well. Yes, and it gets absorbed by the kitchen paper, as you can see. It's not spilling out. It's absorbed around there, all the way around the edges. Make sure that sits into that space there. And then I'm going to take a little bit of uh, greaseproof paper or baking parchment, which is this here, and I'm going to put that on top. I just press that down. And what that does is the water on the cloth, the moisture on the cloth underneath, keeps the paper just very, very gently damp and that stops the acrylics when I put them down on top of this, stops them drying out too quickly. I'm going to just put that there for now and I'm going to take my colour, so I'm going to start with my white and I'm going to take my white first. I'm going to squeeze out a bit of that first and see, I'm not quite sure how much I need and I don't like to waste paint, so I only ever put out small amounts of colour because I can always put out more if I need it. I'll put that there, I'll take my blue and I'm going to put out some blue beside that and we're going to put in a little bit of blue there and then I'm going to take my put the top back on that very carefully I'm going to take some red squeeze out a little bit of my red onto that as well beside there leaving a little bit of space in between each of the colours so that I don't get them messed up and I'll put that here and then finally my yellow I'm going to take a little bit of yellow and I'm going to take that and put that out here and once more leaving a little bit of space. Now as you can see I haven't put out too much colour because if I run out it's very easy to put out more paints whereas I don't like to waste paint. Now I'm going to take my medium sized brush here and it's the softest brush and it's very easy to apply the acrylics with this. Put those out of the way. Now I'm purposely only using these three colours to start. White, blue, red and yellow. All of the colours that we know about extend from the mixture of these three colours. So for example, yellow and red, if mixed together makes, that's right, orange, well done. And red and blue mixed together makes, purple or violet, yes, well done again, that's fantastic, well done. What we might actually do in one of the classes is to do a colour chart with you and explain and actually show you how colour works and how it's all mixed up together and explain how it works in theory as well as in practice. Now, I'm going to just move my palette a little bit over here, out of the way. I think I'll move that jug of water away from my cup area as well, in case I have the misfortune of spilling it all over the wiring on the cockpit. That would not be very good at all. Captain Cosmos, I think, would be a bit um, confused if he came in and things weren't working because there was a little bit of a spill onto it. Now, from there, we have the various different pieces and the first thing we're going to start with is what's called a wash. All we want to do is put in a basic colour for all of the different areas. The sky, the clouds, the background bushes, Matilda herself, the grass and so on. We don't have to put in the 
the finishing colours. We don't have to pin even the perfect colours. All we need are simple flat colours that represent each of the spaces and help us to understand which area is which. So for example, we'll use a blue sky, we'll use green for the bushes and the grass and so on and so forth. So a wash is a very thin layer of colour or a very transparent layer of colour that we put down first to give a little bit of colour to the space. Now, because I am using acrylics, I'm going to thin my acrylics with a little bit of water. Of course, I am painting on paper. If I use too much water, it's going to make it very, very runny, which means it's going to absorb into the paper very quickly and make it very bubbly, which we don't want. So you need only a small amount of water to work with these paints uh, to create a wash onto this space. Now, there's no proper or right place that you could start. You can start anywhere. You can start on the sky, or you can start with Matilda, or you can start with the trees and the bushes. I always like to start with the main object, which in this case, that's right, Matilda is the focal point. The focal point of any painting is often the most important or main object or area that you want the viewer to see. In one of the drawing uh, videos, I do believe Captain Cosmo talked to about positive and negative space. And it's the same here. We start with a positive space, which in this case is Matilda, and we paint around to make that stand out. So I'm going to dip in a little bit into my water. I'll move my water over here so you can see it maybe. I'm going to dip a little into my water, not too much. And I'm going to mix up a little bit of a pinkish colour, because you can see Matilda is quite pink. And I'm going to start with some white, and into that I'm going to add just a little bit of red. Nothing too much. Now when you're mixing colour, so it's always best, mix small amounts of colour and then when you feel you have the right colour, add more. And of course remember what I said, this is a wash, so your colours don't have to be perfect. We're going to do the painting as we did the drawing, step by step. So the idea is to add, so we start with simple wash and then we add another step and another step and another step after we bring it to a sense of finish. So all I want is a simple light pinky colour. Now, when you look at Matilda, she has quite a peachy or an orangey colour. My pink is quite pinkish, so I'm going to add a tiny little bit of yellow into that just to give that a little bit more of a softer colouring. And you're going to come in, and there's no right or wrong, just fill in the space. And as I said, even though we can see shadows, I'm not worried about whether or not I get exactly the same shapes and forms at this point in time. As I said, all I want is a simple flat colour into these spaces. And I don't even have to stay between the lines if I don't want to. But my pencil lines are there as a guideline. You try and hold your brush a little bit further back so that it gives you a little bit more freedom and you can see what it's doing. And there goes the wash into the Matilda herself, just like that and almost complete. As I said, it doesn't have to be perfect and if you happen to go over the lines, it doesn't matter. And of course, it's also very important to say, we talked about imagination before, this is your painting. If you decide to make Matilda a yellow pig, that's perfectly fine, it's up to you. Never be afraid to play or experiment with your paints or with your art. It is your art after all. Now, from there, I'm going to add a little bit of red to that and I'm going to put in a red flower here and I'm going to fill the whole thing in, in that red just using the point of my brush just get a little bit of colour there I'm going to add a little bit of blue to that and I'm going to put the other flower in I'm going to just move my plate and paint this one in in a sort of violet blue like so lovely, I like that that's very good, I'm very pleased with that now from there, I want to put in a little bit of light green into the background. So I'm going to take, uh, I could wash my brush if I wanted to and make it nice and clean. Um, but for this background, I want a sort of dark green. So I'm going to take my yellow and I'm going to put it in directly in on top of the pink I had already. And you can see, because there was a little bit of blue on my brush, it's coming up quite a light green. And that's great. I'll use that for the moment and I'm going to put some of that into the background. Actually, I'm going to have a tiny bit more blue to make it just a, a little bit more greeny into that space and just into there into the grass into that space and I'm going to use the grass in the foreground just allow it to be a little bit darker in my wash whereas the grass in the background I make it a little bit brighter because colours in the background are usually a little bit lighter because they're in the distance that's right in the distance and when things are in the distance they appear lighter and paler <laughs> Thank you. 
So it's very important not to be afraid to play with your colours, play with your paints and experiment. And know that if you put down a colour and then you decide that you don't like it, it's very easy to fix it. While I have my green, I'm going to add a little bit of white to that, I'm going to add a little more yellow, and I'm going to make a nice bright green for the wash in the background. I'm going to put a little bit more water so there's nice and fluid. And in between my fences, my fence posts, putting little bits in there, and in here, and there, and there, and across here and here. And you can see I'm being quite loose. I'm not trying to be too neat and tidy because painting is not about being neat and tidy. You can be uneven. You can be loose and you can be free. And of course nature is very uneven. Nature wasn't designed perfectly neat and tidy. And while I have that I'm going to add a little bit of blue. I'm going to make a bluey green and I'm going to make my bushes in the background quite a bluey green. Why? That's right because as I said all the colours in the distance are always a little bit more pale are softer in colour. Now from there I will now wash my brush. You can hear me tapping it into the water. Just swirling it from side to side. Never press your brushes down. That's how you damage your brushes. Always just move them or swirl them side to side. Take the paint out. Take out the heavy paint and then take it out and wipe it on your kitchen towel just to dry it out. So I'll take a little piece of kitchen paper and I've got to dry it out. So again, swirl it from side to side. Then take out the excess water off the side of your pot and then just dry it off like so. Okay, put that back. Now I'm going to mix up a little bit of blue, light blue for my sky. So I'm taking some clean white over here and then I'm going to add a little bit of blue. Make sure there's no green on that if I can. So mix up a light blue and that's going to be my sky. And once again, a small amount of water, not too much because I don't want my paper to bubble. I'm just going to tell it a little there and fill in the sky around my clouds like so and around the bushes and being careful the acrylics dry so quickly that the acrylics I put down for the bushes are almost dry and of course your lines on the sky don't all have to be neat and tidy you can work your brush this way or that way or straight over whichever you prefer <laughs> What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of white and I'm going to just very loosely put in an off-white colour, a little bit of blue for my clouds. So I'm using a lighter blue for the clouds rather than a pure white first and I'm just scrunching those in there nice and fluffy and the same over here. So I'm not looking for a colour that's too neat and tidy. You can see getting soft edges and a little bit blends in with the blue because part of the blue is still wet. Now as I said this is still the wash, this is not the finishing of it. Leave that there. Now with that we're using the blue as a base, I'm going to add a little bit of red and a little bit of yellow and all of those combined, see what it makes? It makes a light brown. If I put a little bit more red, a little bit more yellow and a little bit more blue, it makes it a slightly darker brown. And I'm going to use that for my fence posts. One, add a little bit of water, so just across these spaces, so my pencil lines are still showing because what they're before is my lights and darts later on. And then we take a little bit more red, a little bit more yellow, and making a slightly warmer brown, I'm going to paint the trough. From there, I'm going to wash my brush once more. And I'm going to make sure it's cleaned off. So once again, dipping it into the water very gently and swirling it, drying off with my kitchen paper. Once again, just taking it, drying off. You can see it's quite clean now. And I'm going to come back in with a little bit of my light blue. And just remember we said we had a little puddle here. That will be reflecting some of the colour from the sky and some of the colours around it. So I'm going to just put in a little bit of soft blue into that space first, just as a foundation, remember, a wash colour. So now I want to put a little bit of food into the trough, so I'm going to take a little bit of my blue and my red, add a little bit of yellow, 
black, kind of darkish. I'm gonna put that in again, just slightly darker. Now we may really use different colors there. The food in the trough will be made up of many different things. Scraps of food from the uh, farm on which the Mitchell herself is living. So we can have bits of vegetables and maybe little bits of meat and or potato or many different things. So we'll add some colors to show that later on. Just put that in. And again, look, look at my lines. It's very important to show you that my lines are not perfectly neat and they don't have to be. When you're painting, it's not about being perfect and we can make it as neat and tidy as we wish as we add to it. For now, we're just interested in putting in a wash. And I keep saying that because it's important to remember that step one is the wash. We add all of our flat colors, but they can be done very loosely as you can see. And now we can see very clearly where our sky is, where our clouds are, where Matilda is, and also where the trough and the food in the trough and the little puddle in the foreground and of course a few little flowers. But we can still see our pencil lines underneath so it's very easy for us to see the detail. And you can see around the outside of the talking bubble. It's a little bit loose but we'll tidy that up when we're painting the spaces around it. And I'm going to use the white of the paper for that for now so that I can put something into it later on. But of course if you want to add your own colour to that, if you want to put in a different colour, maybe yellow or a light colour, like a, a green or a blue or a, any colour you wish, it's entirely up to you. Remember, as I said, it's your imagination, it's your painting, you can do whatever you feel is correct. And that is now the first stage of our painting complete. So, enjoy doing your wash. When I come back in part two, we'll complete the painting of Matilda by adding more lights and darks. Until then, have lots of fun and art adventures. See you soon. Bye!